Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez back again. We're going to be talking about the Pro 1000 and its options. Let me let me warn you, I'm going to be covering quite a lot of information here. So be aware that this might be a little bit longer than usual. Okay, so Pro 1000 is an outstanding printer. It is built like a tank, but not 100%. It has one very weak point, or Achilles heel, if you will, and that is the mechanism that grabs on and locks onto your cartridges. When you pop a cartridge in, you push it in, it goes click. And then to remove it, you push in, that unlocks it, and you pull it out. How many times can you perform this action before that little flimsy plastic lock breaks. Precision Color just told me that he, in other words, Mike Lee, took his Pro 1000 in for a repair job. And the technician discussed with him that very point. The fact that a lot of the repairs, in fact, a vast majority of the repairs that he performs has to do with the replacement of those plastic locks. The ones that grab onto your cartridge and load it and you push in and it unlocks and you remove the cartridge whenever you're going to exchange one. It's like a thousand dollar job. You might as well buy a new printer. Isn't that ridiculous? So Pro 1000 has all sorts of technology that is not included in most other brands of printers. We're not going to get into those, but they do have an amazing set of technologies built in. Unfortunately, that little point, that little lock is the Achilles heel. And you have to be careful. Why are we talking about that? Because we refill. If you're never going to refill, you probably never have to worry about that because how many sets of cartridges are you going to actually replace 10 50 100 sets at $730 each set think about that so if you are refilling on the other hand that means that you have to install single use chips which are not going to be available through proper US-based channels such as Precision Colors and others that may be selling these. There is a legality involved. Uh, apparently, the coding that the chips have to include was not obtained, let's just say, legally. Okay? So, therefore... Um, the warning has been passed to third-party retailers. You know who I'm talking about and others here. And they're just simply not going to be selling single-use chips any longer for the Pro 1000. You want to avoid getting into trouble, let's just say. What about, you may ask, hey, but can't we disable those chips? Well, of course you can. Then you need to find out or figure out some method for you to be able to determine when should I top off said cartridges. These puppies right here. Inside I have a single-use chip. You can see because the holder is white. Otherwise, it would be black. So, how do I keep track if I can no longer see my ink levels. Well, a relatively expensive set of sensors that Precision Colors sells as a package. It's basically little devices that attach to the cartridges. They have to be cabled and everything. There's two electronic uh, LED type boards that are powered through USB power. And basically they indicate 
via a set of 1 through 12 lights which cartridge requires refilling. The frequency that you will be popping a cartridge off to top off and popping it back in should be equal to say you're using OEM because you're going to get a 20% from empty warning. You can immediately react to it or you can just ignore it until you decide it is time to refill. Don't ignore it too long. That little white light is going to be looking at you every time you attempt to print. So it just means that you're down to 20% and to me, I have been weighing them without the sensors attached and they all border around 55 grams with 32 grams being empty. So that difference in weight basically translates to the amount of grams of ink inside the cartridge at the point where the light is triggered. So again, if you follow that method, you're going to be exchanging your cartridges at the same exact rate as if you had been buying OEM and you had ink level indicators. The cartridge reaches low at 20% from empty condition, give or take. And you just, at that point, you can top it off, put it back in, the lights go off, and you're ready to continue printing. What if I don't want to use those sensors? then here comes the problem. You're going to have to periodically check those weights. That means that at whatever type of schedule you want to set up for yourself, if you're really nervous, you're going to do it like every month or every two months, you will be removing those cartridges more than you should be at a greater rate than you should be. And the more you remove and replace one of those cartridges, the more you are likely to wear out that little locking device that will cost you a thousand bucks to repair. I was shocked when he said that to me. Maybe that's Canadian dollars. Still a lot of money that such a condition could be prevented by using a sensor system. That's about 200 something. And that way you are now exchanging cartridges at the same rate you would with normal. Whereas without the sensors, you're always nervous as to how heavy are the cartridges. Gee, I better check them. So you know you're going to check all 12 of them. And whatever they weigh, whew, if they weigh 75 grams, then you have a while to go until you reach about 50, 55 grams. And then I would suggest you top them off. But if you're constantly checking your cartridges, then you're constantly wearing out that locking mechanism. Keep that in mind, okay? So why should you choose to use the sensor system? Because it's non-invasive. It does not really connect with anything internally. The Pro 1000 is designed to completely use up the contents of that cartridge so that you are basically using all 80 milliliters of ink. When the chip says I'm empty, you have actually utilized all of your ink. If you're not refilling and you're throwing away those cartridges, you can be assured you're not throwing away any ink. You are throwing away an empty cartridge. So that is why it is so important to realize that the internal mechanisms that the printer utilizes to determine how much ink is actually physically for sure traveling through the printer will allow you to at least ensure make you feel good about it somewhat that you are actually getting every ml of ink being used instead of being thrown away with an empty cartridge so again when the cartridge chip says i'm empty the cartridge is bone dry empty and the way that works is rather ingenious Internally, there are some compartments which contain a little bit of space. It holds a certain amount of ink. It knows how much ink it holds. 
there are internal sensors that sense levels of ink so when you recharge or refill one of these compartments the ink level will rise it will trigger the upper sensor and that shuts down the inlet valve that allows ink to enter via gravity you print 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 the level on that compartment drops it triggers a secondary sensor which then opens up that very same inlet valve and allows ink to trickle back in and the cycle continues over and over and over it knows exactly how much ink has been used per cycle so it just does internally very simple math when 80 ml of ink has been used has been actually tabulated it declares the chip empty there are some weird conditions where you might fill up that compartment it shuts off the inlet valve but you only have one ml left that's not enough to refill that compartment so what happens is that one ml will trickle in it never reaches that top sensor the valve stays open it will print 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 the second sensor is triggered but the valve is open but there's no ink coming in because the cartridge is empty so the next sensor right after that one gets triggered and he says wait a minute the third sensor got triggered that means the cartridge is empty zap it will write an empty code to your chip well that's perfect the cartridge now is empty your chip says i'm empty wonderful you did not throw away any ink when you get rid of that cartridge or sell it to someone so when you disable it basically you no longer have any kind of visual indication of how much ink you have normally you will be able to see that either on the screen on the printer or on your driver when you are printing a job so now you have to rely on the sensors or god forbid you have to remove the cartridges every two months or so no don't do that let me tell you if you guys go back to my original setup of the sensor system i forgot how long ago that was i've only refilled partially the 12. okay not all 12 have been topped off even the first time after installing the sensor system so yeah you really don't have to do this that often you should not be checking your cartridges assuming you don't have the sensors that often because that will exasperate the breakdown of this very delicate locking mechanism now one big announcement for you guys so normally when you order the so-called signature edition ink set eight of the colors you get i believe is 82 ml of ink that is one full load so an empty cartridge will hold about 90 so the actual load is supposed to be 80. They give you 82. And you just load that completely into your empty cartridge. Make sure that you drill holes and prep them for that. And a plug. Fill up your cartridge and you're good to go. Now, the eight inks will cost you $12 each. So do the math. The other four colors, that would be Chrome Optimizer, Yellow, Red, and Blue have been provided to you if you buy the complete set as OEM inks. The reason being because at that time, nothing that was available could come up to par to OEM output. So again, Chrome Optimizer, yellow, red, and blue were OEM. That cost, I believe it was $34 each load, okay? So the reason being is because he had to buy 700 ml cartridges and then basically by hand harvest the ink from them and then load the bottles for you. So you can have the luxury of having four colors of OEM to bring that complete ink set to the point where you would not be able to discern any difference whatsoever between full OEM and finally when your signature edition ink set reaches the print head you would not see any kind of a transitional change in output. That has already been proven. No problem whatsoever. Well, what do you know? He has found an equivalent blue ink that is as good 
as OEM. By good I mean accurate and can output as close as OEM as humanly possible. The same thing with yellow. The red, however, it still has to be OEM. So by replacing those two colors at $34 each, that would be $68. Well, now you can buy the same two colors for $24. So that will reduce the price of that total ink set by quite a bit. I recommend if you are printing on glossies, if you're printing on very shiny luster or semi-gloss even, I would recommend you stick with the OEM Chrome Optimizer because everything else that's available in the third party world just doesn't have the gloss characteristics of real honest to goodness OEM Chrome Optimizer. That That is the truth. So unless you're printing on a lot of matte or very low gloss materials, and you really need to use the OEM Chrome Optimizer, you might be a little bit disappointed. All right, now, just the other day, I received a package from Precision Colors. Very graciously, he replenished some of the colors that I was running low on and included the new yellow and blue inks right here. So this is the uh, blue ink, this is the yellow ink. So what I am going to do it's kind of moot at this point for me anyway, because I went ahead and bought some 700 ml cartridges myself. So I think only seven of my colors are third party and the rest are OEM. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to dump that whole bottle into my empty yellow cartridge or near empty yellow cartridge, as well as the blue one. And we'll print. Of course, it's going to take quite a while for that new ink, new ink to reach the printhead and we will see. I will have to run some controls before I do that. I'm running the normal Sokol Hybrid ink set, the Signature Edition ink set, plus I believe I got OEM Magenta as well. So what I will do is I will print some standard images on certain papers and then label them, put them in a box, and then we'll load the new inks. We'll top everything off with these inks and then we'll proceed to print and maybe i don't know four five six months down the road i'll do another set of standard images by that point i should have moved my new inks into the printed region and then we should be able to see what differences if any are taking place when you output to paper you can compare the two and you will be able to at least visually see if there's any difference if you can see something visually, that's quite a change. Normally what happens is that they'll use a spectrophotometer to measure chips, in other words, color patches. But if you can actually visually see a change, that's, that's bad, okay? So hopefully what will happen is nothing, nothing will change. And that's what happened when I went from full OEM to the third-party signature edition ink set. I printed, 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 and I forgot all about it. By the time I was beginning to top off my cartridges, it was already well beyond that point where the new inks had already reached the printed, and I still did not see a difference. That's wonderful. That's, that's really great to know. I cannot say that about any other ink set out there available for the Pro 1000. There are several. Maybe the difference is minimal. Maybe Precision Colors is just a nit picking so-and-so, which I do appreciate because that means he's aiming toward as close to perfection as possible. That's what he wants for us users. That is it. Okay, I hope I didn't put you to sleep, folks. We will be here Sunday for our normal live stream. I will, again, go over this information with that particular audience and hopefully we will realize what a fantastic printer that is and what the weak points of it are as well. It's not the only printer that has that particular type of weak point. The PA-100s and the 900s, the 700s, anything that has a stationary type cartridges that you have to push into lock, that was one of the weak points. 
3880, 3800. They all had that problem as well. Alrighty, that is it for now. Thank you so much for watching. Of course, don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. Happy printing, everyone. Bye-bye.